Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You in the room? Hallelujah. Let's just celebrate Jesus. Come on. We're here to worship Jesus. Why don't we stand to our feet? I think we can do a little better than that. Let's celebrate Jesus, I say. Come on. We're here to bless the Lord. Hey, listen. This morning, we've come here with the express reason of encountering the Lord together. And we're really leaning into the nature of God, that He is the God who heals us, that He is Jehovah Rapha. And when we talk about healing, we're not just pursuing healing for healing itself. Healing is who God is. And we have an amazing thing laid out this morning where we're going to hear a testimony that I really believe is going to build faith in us, not just to acknowledge that this is what the Word of God says, but to see it activated and true in our life. So listen, as we worship the Lord, I just want you to imagine what could happen if you actually began to take God up on His Word and believe Him for what He says. Not just saying, okay, I know this, but no, I'm actually going to believe this. I'm going to lean into this and begin to expect to experience this. So even right now, we already set the stage. We made room so that the Lord can move and do what He wants here this morning. So let's just go before the throne of grace right now and begin to invite his presence in our midst to move on us and do as he pleases. So Father, here we are. We come here this morning to worship you, Jesus. Jesus, you are the healer. Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of our worship, you have freedom to do as you please. We just ask you to release the presence of heaven over our gathering this morning. Lord, let there be an open heaven in this house where your spirit has freedom to reign. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is healing. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is breakthrough. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is deliverance. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We invite you. All the manifestation of your spirit, God to increase in our midst right now. Lord, you know what each one of us stand in need of today. God, we ask you to meet that need. Father, we stir up faith in the room. Your word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Lord, we will bless you with all of our soul and we will not forget all your benefits. Come on, just begin to bless the Lord. Begin to bless the Lord. Be a little too wide. Let's bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Father, we worship you this morning. We bless you in this house this morning. God, we exalt your name in this place. Hallelujah. We just want to set the atmosphere for Jesus to be comfortable. Amen? That's an atmosphere of worship. God, we worship you. We bless you. We bless you in this place. Hallelujah, God. Father, have your way. Even as we worship you now, God, we bless you in this place. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen, amen. When you guys think of the Lord, when you think of Jesus, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Come on, yell it out. Yeah. Come on, keep it coming. Use this time to worship him. I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, God.
you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. And makes me want to shout.
as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. keep singing until faith fills the room. I feel like we're pressing in right now. I want to go back to that phrase, be exalted now in the heavens. And I want to invite some of you just to come forward to the front and make this declaration that Jesus will be exalted in this house, that Jesus will be lifted high, that he will be the name above all names in this place and in our lives. So if you are feeling compelled, I want you to come forward. The Lord is marking, he's pressing upon people this morning. He's laying his hand upon you. I feel like we need to know worship is not just singing songs. Worship involves our whole life. It, it involves us having some kind of action. And so does faith. Faith is not a passive thing. Faith actually moves. Yes, thank you. Faith moves mountains. Faith moves God. Faith is not just hoping and having wishful thinking. So as we're singing this morning, I want you to understand the power of your words to create a reality for you. To understand the power of your word in this season to create a reality for you that what you're speaking to, what you're confessing is actually an admission of faith for what you're believing for. And we're not just believing for a little, we're believing for a lot. We believe in a God of abundance. We believe in a God of extravagance. We believe in a God who is active and alive and real in our world. We believe in a God who is on the move, who's actually advancing in the world and is doing that through his people, through his church. We are not defeated. We have victory in this house. It says that he's given us every victory and we walk from triumph to triumph. Listen, we got some flags up here too. If you wanna move in the spirit and wave some flags around and, and, and just begin to worship with the angels, I wanna encourage you to do that. Just don't hit anybody. All right, we, this is a healing service though. If you get hit, we'll pray, we'll pray for you. But listen, we wanna, we wanna declare, be exalted now in the heavens. Let your glory fill this place. And I want you to mean it, say it like you mean it. Confession comes from the heart. Let's worship. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name. Glory fills this place. 
Yours is the 
time where he's never failed you. Probably a daily thing, right? Never failed. Come on, just worship in that moment. Never failed. Never failed.
don't want this moment to pass. I want to continue in this moment. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord put on my heart the word desire. And so I just started looking up verses about desire. And um, within a couple of minutes, all of a sudden, the song began to flow. Here I go. <laughs> Sorry. There it is. And, um, and it just talks about um, that there's, in his presence, there is healing. In his presence, there is freedom. But it also is a convicting song for me because everything I do, everything I say, all of that I want to be coming out of his presence. And um, there are times, because I'm human, and um, that the flesh wins every once in a while, like when you live in Philadelphia and you have to drive. <laughs> so you guys get where I'm going, right? Um, and so I'm like, come on! And then now my wife, who is the Holy Spirit sitting in the passenger seat, she goes, okay, worship, worship pastor. <laughs> it's that conviction. And so there's this one phrase in this song that says, you're all that I want, you're all that I need. Consume me like a fire until you're all that I breathe. It's like everything that I want needs to come from him. Yes, and so um, this song is called, um, I forget, um, All of Me. Wow, I do that a lot. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but I'm going I'm to teach you the chorus first, and um, we'll go from there. In his presence, there is freedom. In your presence, I have all of you and more. And in your presence, there is healing. Just one touch from you. Yeah. 
Just to declare freedom is here. 
Say it like you mean it. Freedom is here. Don't go anywhere yet. Declare it again. Say, healing is here. Now, anybody, if you need healing in your body, even right now, even before we pray, the Lord can begin to heal you. Some of you, I believe the Lord's already beginning to heal you, even as we're in worship. Just put your hand on yourself and say, healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here. Hallelujah. Yeah, just sing that, Mark. Go ahead. You can just sing that. I'm just going to sing that over you. Healing is here. Thank you, Jesus. It's because Jesus is here. Healing is here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Because Jesus is here. Oh, see, God, da, 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 see, so it. Wow. Wow, I feel it. I feel that. Some of you are receiving your healing even right now. Healing is here. Why? Because Jesus is here. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, he's moving in the room. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just have your way right now, Holy Spirit. We're in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Come on, we're in the presence of Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. Let's just wait for him. There's just something I feel like he's doing deep on the inside of some of us right now. There's a stillness. There's a peace. There's a peace that the Lord is depositing right now. Yeah, Jesus, this is what we want. We're here for you. You're holy. Just let him work. Just let him work. Just let him work. Some of us, he's, there's a moment of breakthrough for some of you right now. Sometimes you got to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. You've been too strong for too long. The Lord say, be weak so I can make you strong. It's in your weakness that my strength is made perfect. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just surrender ourselves to you this morning. We, we, stop the, we cease the battle. We cease from striving right now, Lord. All striving must cease in your presence, God. Father, we thank you for the rest of the Lord that's upon this house. Lord, we thank you that the power of the Lord is present this morning to heal. God, that faith is in the room that where our faith has been weak, you're now strengthening. Where our faith has been small, you're now increasing it, Lord. Where we've been discouraged, God, you are restoring and bringing encouragement because in your presence, Lord, we have all we need and more. We have you. We have you. Lord, we just thank you, Father. I just pray even just this sweet sense of your spirit that we have upon us right now, let that just carry us through the rest of our gathering together today, Lord. Father, fill us afresh. Fill us to overflowing, Lord. Help us. I just feel like we're going to see the glory of the Lord in this house. We're going to see the glory of Jesus, the beauty of Jesus, because he's beautiful. He was so beautiful 
that the disciples didn't want to leave the mountain. They said, hey, let's just build up right here and just camp here because this is a good place to be. Lord, we thank you because as we see your glory, we're transformed. As we see your beauty, we're transformed. Just like you were transformed in the glory on that Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus. As we see you, we become like you. God, open up our eyes today. Help us to see the beauty, not only that we can experience by your presence, but even what you do in our lives and in the life of your people. There's beauty that you're working in this season of our life, God. And Lord, we just thank you for the victory now. We thank you for the breakthrough now. We thank you for showing up. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for teaching us through hardships, perseverance. God, wherever we're at today, I just pray, settle our hearts to hear your word, to hear what you would impart to us so that, God, we could have strength for our journeys. To know that, Lord, with you, nothing is impossible. We love you, God. We thank you, Father. And we praise you for what's yet to come. We ask this all right now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, before you grab a seat, hug somebody, bless them, let them know you're glad they're here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So good to love Jesus. And it's so good to know we're loved by Jesus. Well, praise the Lord and good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the crossing. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? This is his house and we are his house. He, we are his dwelling place. So we don't forget that either. Well, good morning. My name is George Matthew Clash. I'm the lead pastor here at The Crossing. I want to welcome any first-time guests that we have here. I know we have some friends and family uh, from the Bonet family that are here uh, to celebrate the great victory of Reagan Grant. Come on. Come on. I'm already... <laughs> Woo, we got to get through announcements. All right. We're just so excited. I'm so proud of Sherry. I'm, I'm proud of her family and just all the Lord has carried them through. And, you know, uh, it's just been a joy just watching what the Lord's been doing to her. But listen, listen, this, this is your first time. We want to connect with you. Uh, we're going to do that through our connection card. Someone say connection card. All right, you're going to see that right in the seat uh, pocket in front of you. I'm going to encourage you, fill that out in its entirety. What we want you to do? Fill it out. All right, if you're new, fill that out please, okay? This is so we know you're here, so we can love on you, connect with you, um, help you know about different things that are happening here at the church, and, uh, and just get you integrated, get you involved, because we're a growing family here, and uh, we believe God's doing great things, and we want you to be a part of that, and we want to believe in the great things God's doing in you. So at the end of the service, uh, you can head over to our connection desk. It's right out in the lobby. And um, you will be able to drop your card off there. And then we have a free gift. Someone say free gift. All right. All gifts are free, but this gift is definitely one that you want. We want to bless you with, and we'll give you that. And, uh, and you'll have a little something to remember the day and to remember us by. Uh, so listen, just a couple of things. If, you're not, if you don't know, um, you know, we had a, quite a tragedy unfold here on last Saturday. There was a flash flood right down the street at 532. And... Uh, the crossing, for, for all intents and purposes, became the command center for the community. We had first responders, we had search and rescue, Upper Makefield, and other cooperating departments here um, as they, um, on Saturday, rescued several 
um, from this flash flood who thankfully they lived, um, but about seven people lost their life um, in that flood, which was devastating. Something like we've never seen before. And uh, we had the uh, privilege of not only hosting all those first responders um, and the day of uh, being able to pray and really help meet the needs of the people who were being rescued. Uh, we, we had a prayer vigil here on Thursday. And we saw a number of people from the community come. Uh, the place was full, and it was just a time of healing. And, you know, we our goal was to just direct people to Jesus, just shepherd them to Jesus to say, listen, uh, he's near to the brokenhearted. And, uh, and it was just a wonderful occasion for us to be able to bless and serve the community. And at the same time, can you believe this? We had a conference happening here called Project 215, where we had saints being equipped by Paul and Donna Toko and Ruth Hendrickson. And it was just an incredible week for those who came out. And I just thought that it was such a prophetic picture for where we're going here at The Crossing, uh, where we have not only the ability to reach and bless our community, but also to build up and equip the saints for the work of ministry. You know, so we're reaching the community, we're building up the saints, we got different ministries connecting with us to do that. You know what that all says? Kingdom. 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 It's no competition in the kingdom. You know, there's one word I'm thinking about right now, and it's saturate. And uh, we want to oversaturate the world with the kingdom of God. So there could never be enough ministries, never enough Christian businesses, never enough believers. We want to see the kingdom of God come in its fullness. So I want to thank everybody who was able to participate in either one of those events, especially the prayer vigil, um, as we were able to serve the community. And um, so what we're going to do now is I want to, I want to transition into offering time, but we're going to take up two offerings today. The first one will be our regular tithes and offering. And when we say a tithe, we mean 10% of our income. That's what it means for us to give here at the crossing. 10% of all your increase, the Bible says, give unto the Lord. And he will make sure that your life overflows with every good thing. Who believes that? That's the word of God. And, and believe me, we're being good stewards of the finances that you're entrusting us with here. I just want to thank you for your giving. Uh, we've actually had a strong streak of giving, which means that means you're being more faithful, which means we know how to strategize and prioritize about what we're doing here at the church. So I just celebrate you guys for that. I honor you for that and encourage you to continue to do that. So listen, if you'd like to give uh, to The Crossing specifically today, uh, you can text uh, Crossing UMC one word to 77977. Does anybody do that, actually? All right, cool. All right, it's fun. It's a fun way to do it. I've been trying that out lately. You can go to uh, crossingumc.org slash give, or you can give in person uh, right now at the service if you have a physical offering. Uh, the ushers will pass around the baskets now for you to do that. Uh, the second offering that we're going to be collecting, we've uh, decided to do what we can to help serve these families who were impacted, these nine families that were impacted by this flash flood. And uh, we have something called a flash flood family relief. And uh, we're trying to raise as much money as we can to really bless and help these families who were impacted uh, by the flood. We had a number of them here. We took up a collection on Thursday and we saw our community be extremely generous. Um, so I'm going to ask you uh, if you'd like to do that. I don't know if we have that slide back there, guys, um, if you want to put that up. Uh, but we have something called the Family Flood Relief. Boom, there it is. If you have a physical offering, I'm going to ask you to put it up in the baskets here just so that we could separate it from our actual church offering. Um, but let's be generous, all right? Let's, I mean, no money can bring back what was lost, but it can help to actually ease some of the stress of what you go through when you're having to put to rest a loved one. So we want to do that. So you can, um, if you give online for that, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to select on the push pay, um, family flood relief. It's going to be one of the uh, drop down menus that you can do. But we just want to bless them. And then Upper Makefield is going to make sure that we're able to get uh, all this money to the families who were, who were, who were impacted. So as we're doing that, I just want to pray a blessing right now. I want to thank you already for your generosity. That's what we're supposed to do, right? God didn't just give it to us for us. He gave, he gives what he gives us in order to be able to reach the world, to, to reap the harvest. 
And that's what we want to do. So ultimately, we want people to know Jesus. We do this because God is extravagant. God is generous. He's not just efficient. He's excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me just uh, say a prayer, even as we're doing this, even as we're collecting the offering. So, Father, we just thank you for the privilege of giving. It is more blessed to give, your word says, than it is to receive. And, Lord, you've given us every good and perfect gift. You've given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you because we can never outgive you. So whatever we give, whether it's of our time, our resources, our talents, you multiply. You don't just add to it. You multiply. So I just pray, Father, that uh, for every seed sown here, that there would be a multiplication of blessing, favor, increase in every way that goes even beyond finances, even when it comes to well-being and even the provision of your spirit in our lives, God, that you would do that in each one of us and for every seed that was sown. Put this money to work for your kingdom. And Lord, let it be used for the advancement of the gospel. We ask this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, um, very excited. This is a big day. So Pastor Sherry, she is going to be uh, bringing a word today, sharing a testimony. Someone say testimony. Revelation 19.10 says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when it comes to the spirit of prophecy, it's the testimony of Jesus. It's whenever, and, and what that means is whenever we talk about what the Lord has done for us, the Bible says it's a prophecy. All right, and, what, and why that's important is that a prophecy is something that's yet to come. A prophecy is something that is yet to be fulfilled. So when we actually share testimonies, it's not just meant to build our faith. It's actually meant to create faith for that same thing that happened for someone to happen for you. Let me give you, whoa, come on, that's a word. Psalms 119 verse 111 says, your testimonies I have taken as my heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. So even if it's not your story, if you're a believer, if you're a part of the body of Christ, any testimony is your story. It's something that you can actually grab by faith and say, Lord, you did it for your son. You did it for your daughter here. Do it for me. So listen, uh, this is going to be an amazing time of hearing an awesome word of testimony for healing. Um, and then what we want to do after that is begin to pray for healing. Uh, we have a video that we're actually going to share that's going to kind of set up the story and the word. So I just want to encourage you to listen in with faith. Lean in with faith especially if you're here this morning and you are in need of healing. It can happen way before the ministry time. I want to keep setting your expectation there. God can begin to move on you even before we move into ministry. Uh, so we're going to play this video, and then we're going to have a word from Pastor Sherry. Bless you.
am so in awe of the atmosphere that is in this building right now. I've felt this atmosphere before. When I was in the hospital room in Philadelphia with my daughter dying of cancer and God changed the atmosphere. That's the kind of atmosphere that is here right now. A healing atmosphere. I just want to thank everybody for coming today. I am so excited to share this testimony with you. Um, for those of you uh, maybe who came and didn't know, you are celebrating an amazing day with me and my family, one that we didn't think was going to come. And I'm just, my family's here, my parents, um, we have friends, we have uh, the whole church family, and this is just, I am blown away. I'm, I thought I should bring up a tissue box, but I'm not going to because I'm going to cry at the end, okay? <laughs> so I just want to take a minute and thank the Lord for what he has done. Come on. So, Woo! yes. Yeah. And I'm just going to pray for a minute. So, Lord, all glory to you. All glory to you, the one who heals, the only one. I just come to you this morning, and I just thank you so much for my daughter. I thank you for saving her life. I thank you, Lord, that you were with us through the whole entire battle. You never left our side, Lord. And what you did for us, Lord, you can do for someone else. And, Lord, I just pray that this atmosphere it just stays, Lord, and that whoever needs a healing to, to this morning, Lord, just steps into their healing. Hallelujah. You are healer, Lord, and we just pray to you, and I thank you, Lord, that this day has come in the name of Jesus. So I am Pastor Bonet. I'm the family pastor here at The Crossing, and um, so we're here, uh, my family, my parents, friends, the church. We're here as a community to praise God for what he has done. This journey of Reagan's is at the end and God has the victory in Reagan's life. Hallelujah. Yes, but this doesn't mean that it wasn't hard and it wasn't long and we weren't scared because we were. So we're so thankful that you came. This is gonna be a powerful healing service. And if you're in the room right now and you need healing of any kind, I believe that God is gonna move powerfully in your life this morning. And so there's many testimonies that I'm gonna share with you as you get to know me, but this testimony is one of my favorites. It's the testimony of the miracle of God. And it's such a significant day for me and my family and it, particularly uh, my daughter, Reagan. And I wanna share the testimony of how God can and will heal cancer. Amen. Come on. And there were so many different lessons I learned throughout my journey uh, with cancer, with Reagan's cancer and being in the hospital and just so many things, but there were five different lessons that I wanted to impart to you this morning. The first one is preparation. Proverbs 21, 31 says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. So God had prepared me over the years, over the years, the years, so many years of preparing me and teaching me from the time that I said yes to living for him. And he was preparing me for this specific battle. I didn't know at the time, but everything I learned from the years of being mentored, I had um, you know, different uh, women mentoring me, showing me who Jesus was, all of those things I needed going through this battle. And so everything before that I had built on the world and I had learned you know, as growing up, just I wasn't a Christian, I just kind of learned as the world taught me. And so I had to learn things, I learned how to pray I learned how to fellowship. I learned how to hear God's voice. Did you guys know you can hear God's voice? Yeah. I learned discernment in situations and of people. I learned what God thinks of me. I learned what he thinks of others, of what he thinks of miracles, 
of laying on hands and singing and worshiping over a situation. And I saw God perform miracle after miracle after miracle in my life, from the big to the small. And so when I entered into this battle with Reagan, I had a really great understanding of what faith was. I, I learned really quick how to trust in the Lord and just to have faith in him no matter what the situation was. It kind of came easy for me at the time. And the things that the Lord and the Holy Spirit teaches you along the way will be the tools that you will need in your future journey. There are battles that the Lord is preparing you for that he's already given you the victory in defeating them. Hallelujah. The next part was the pit. Word of the Lord, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 9 through 10. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we may not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set out hope that he will continue to deliver us. On. on the night of January 6, 2021, um, I had gone to bed around 9 o'clock. I wanted to go to bed earlier, but no. <laughs> um, so 9 o'clock I went to bed, and uh, Reagan was at her father's house. And I just remember they called me and said, Reagan wasn't feeling so well. And over the past couple months before that, she hadn't been feeling very well. But we had taken her to the doctor. They'd check her out. They'd say, I think it's viral. It was also during COVID, so we weren't sure, like, maybe it could be COVID. Um, so you know, they said, okay, well, I'm gonna take her to the hospital. And I still didn't, like, nothing register. I'm just like, okay, um, I'm going to sleep. So I went to sleep around 11 o'clock, my phone rang. And I picked it up and it was her father. And he just said, hello? He didn't have to say one more word. I knew, I knew what it was. And so I hung up the phone and I'm not kidding, I leaped down those stairs. It was like one, one jump down those stairs to get to the, my car and get over to that hospital. Uh, my brother was at my, my house at the time, I wasn't married, and um, he was there, so he was able to watch the kids. And um, see, that's another thing that God set up. See, if you look back, you can see how God has everything under control. He will take care of you even in times of trouble. So I entered the hospital. Are you Reagan's mom? As I'm standing there, tears running down my face, the inside of my body wanting to just burst out. Yes, I am. Well, come with me into this room. As I came into the room, your daughter has cancer. Everything around me went dark. I was, I couldn't even see the floor. I couldn't see the floor. I couldn't see anything around me when I heard those words. I was screaming. I was, I was just hitting whatever I could. I was trying to get a grip. Nothing was working. I just could not believe this was happening. It was so dark. There was nobody in the room with me. It was just complete darkness. But I promise you, when you are in the absolute darkest pit possible and you know God, you will see him there. He will not for one second leave your side. So I kept looking up and trying, you know, trying to get it together and getting glimpses of, of, of God and he helped me up. He slowly began to help me up so I could get up and go be with Reagan. When something like this happens, it's okay to feel these things. It's okay to let God surround you and take care of you. The next thing is community, family, friends, and church. And this is a big one. Did you know that community is life-giving and essential to following Christ? One of the best and most surprising things that happened to me during this journey is immediately I saw the community, our family, our friends, come out and surround us. It was absolutely overwhelming and I thought to myself, this is how it should be. This is how we should live. 
people living life and sharing in the joys and the hardships of what we go through. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So the community, the school, my running team, they brought food, gift cards, um, they said like everything you could possibly think to my boys. They took care of them. Over the next five months, I had to live in the hospital with Reagan. And I knew, and so did she know, that people out there loved us. The church came together, prayed, sent cards. You guys are all part of my journey. Hallelujah. This is, it's, it's amazing that I get to share this day with you. And so the church just showed up big time. What they did was they did something really cool. Um, so it was during COVID and no one was allowed in the room and uh, not even the pastors were allowed to come in. And um, the church sent people to the waiting room, sent them two by two, okay? And so at the, right at the beginning, uh, you know, for the first like month and a half, I didn't know if Reagan was gonna live. I thought she was gonna die. I thought for sure she's not gonna make it. And so as people came in, there were days where I just didn't even wanna talk. I just wanted to sit there and cry. I just wanted to sit there and say nothing. And God set it up so beautifully. The day that I felt like that, he would just send two women to come and hug me and love me and just sit there with me. Then there were days where, you know, I didn't wanna think about the hospital. I didn't wanna think about, I just wanted to like just be somewhere else. And God would send me a couple, you know, a husband and wife, and they would just tell me fun stories. God provided my every need. In your trouble, God will provide for you. He will send you the help that you need. And this is why being connected to a church is so important. Because we're family and we're able to be the hands and the feet to each other when we're in the valleys. So here comes the miracle. Matthew 19, 26 says, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. So as we began the journey, everything the doctors would say is the worst case scenario came true, okay? So they would come and take her and say, um, okay, we're taking her for a procedure, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. Worst case scenario, but that normally doesn't ever happen, could be this. And then whatever that was, was what was happening. I was like, can you cut, not come in here and say that anymore, thank you. Um, so over, over the beginning, um, Reagan became almost paralyzed. You saw in the pictures, she was um, in her bed throughout the beginning of treatment. She couldn't walk, she was bedridden. She couldn't eat, she had a feeding tube. She couldn't get up to shower or use the bathroom. I had to do all of that for her. It looked really hopeless. It looked very hopeless. And I remember just thinking, like, she's gonna die. I felt it, I could feel death. And I remember one day um, at the hospital, I went out, you know, once in a while to just walk and, and talk with the Lord. And um, I was out there with God and I was just saying, why, Lord? Why us? Why Reagan? But I told him that no matter what happened, that even if this was the path that he had for me and for her, that I would never stop loving him. And I would never stop living for him, no matter what. No matter what happens, I will praise him, I would honor him, and I would live for him. Hallelujah. You see, it's easy to praise God in the joy and in the good times. But are you gonna praise him in the storm? Are you gonna praise him in the midst of not having the outcome be what you want? It got worse and worse and she went into surgery one night and the nurse came into the room. She comes in and she's, Regan's up in the ICU. She says, Regan's in the ICU and I'm just preparing you right now. She's, she's probably gonna die. And I, couldn't believe it. 
I just couldn't believe it. I, was, I wanted to go see her, they wouldn't let me up there. Um, she was in really bad condition. And so I had got already, already gotten the church on to the praying. I had sent them a text right away. Um, and then I had to um, just live through that. And, and she didn't die that night. And the next day, I get a call. Hey, Sherry, can you join us on a Zoom call with the church? OK. So I'm thinking, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, thinking maybe there's like two or three people, OK, on a Zoom call. Now imagine, you're on your little phone, you got your Zoom call. I'm going over. It's like the whole church is on this Zoom call, OK? Like the whole church. <laughs> Really, unbelievable. And so at that moment, um, the church started calling on God. They started praying. They started speaking life over Reagan. They started shouting at the enemy, you don't have rain here. You must leave. And it was during this call that the atmosphere changed. The nurses, it's on the oncology floor. The nurses are just swarming in, swarming out all the time because there's always things going on. And so the nurses would come in. We're doing the Zoom call. They'd come in, go out, come in, go out, all different ones. And all of them said, it feels so good in here. It just feels so good in here, you know? And I knew at this moment that everything had changed for my daughter. I knew the way I could feel death is the way I could feel life. From that point on, she got better and better. Whether God does what you want or not, you need to devote yourself to the Lord. I was prepared to follow God no matter what the outcome. And I believe that played a big part in what led to her miracle. And the last part is walking it out. Sometimes we get our miracle, but we still have some walking out to do. This particular miracle was a marathon. It's been two and a half years of medication, hospital visits, blood work, spinal taps, chemotherapy, losing her hair, growing, it growing back, losing it again, and just overall watching Reagan. But she knew that God was on her side. She knew the whole time, even at the beginning, when she was in the trenches, that God was with her. The song that was playing on the uh, slideshow, that was the song that I sang over every single day. I prayed for her every single morning, all throughout the day. When I would pray for her, I would lay my hands on her. Even when it looked hopeless, I kept my eyes set on the only one who could save her. And I watched and I saw what God could do, and he saved my daughter. But here's the amazing thing. What he did for her, he can do for you. Or for your loved one. Or for a friend. There's always hope, always. Together we lean into Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. And in a moment, I'm going to ask Reagan and my family to come up, and we're going to ring this bell, which, by the way, when I heard it was on the cross, I cried and cried and cried. OK? How many people get to ring their bell on the cross? Hallelujah. Come on. And Reagan will be healed of cancer. Cancer patients, they ring the bell at the end of treatment to signify great accomplishment. It means the end of a tough chapter of chemo and of cancer and a new beginning of a life free of cancer. But know this, the healer behind the bell is Jesus. The healer behind the bell is Jesus. And then after Reagan rings the bell, we're going to have some worship. And I beg you, if you're here this morning and you need healing, of any kind, 
cancer, autoimmune diseases, physical problems, I ask you to come forward. Receive today what the Lord has already done for you. Step into your healing. What God has done for my daughter, he can do for anyone in this room right now, anyone online. Freely you receive and freely you give. We are here after receiving Reagan's healing and we are gonna pray to give out this morning. So I invite Reagan. Amen. I want to say, indeed, that is the sound of freedom, right? Come on. Victory. Victory. I just want to say, God's hand is so powerfully upon this family. All right? And this is God's plan A, right? Is to bring uh, victory, to bring revival, to bring transformation to the world through families. And Lord, we just thank you so much for the Bonet family. We thank you for Reagan Grant, God. We thank you for sparing her life the testimony, the walking testimony that she is. And Lord, the things that you're gonna do in each one of their lives. Father, what a moment. This is a corporate victory, church. This is why we're doing this today. This is our testimony. Their story is our story. Our story is their story. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for healing cancer. And listen, what we want to do right now in this moment, too, is we want to recognize any other cancer survivors in the room who've been healed of cancer. And if that's you, can you just raise your hand for us right now? Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So proud of you, Sherry. Come on, was that an awesome word? Bless you guys. Hey, listen, we do, we do want to move now into some time of ministry. Listen, healing is for today. Healing is for today. So don't grab your seat. Keep standing. Don't grab your seat. We're going to move right into some ministry. So listen, if you're in need of physical healing this morning, I want you to come forward in faith. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, your healing might be a marathon or it can happen in a moment. So listen, we just want to call on the God who heals this morning. We want to thank God for the victory. And if you know, and if you know anybody right now, if you, if you know anyone who's dealing with a cancer battle, I also want to invite you forward because you can stand in proxy for that person. And even as we pray for you, though you don't have cancer, that person can receive their healing. In fact, the Lord can even impart to you the anointing to go and lay hands on them so that they can be healed. Come on. So what's this? We can just begin to worship. I just think we need to wait on the Lord just for a moment. Just exalt the name of Jesus. He is the healer. Our job is to pray. His job is to heal. Amen. Come on, just begin to exalt Jesus. We lift you up, Lord. We lift you up. 
We lift you up. If you're not, if you're not up front, and you guys can move forward more. Move forward more. Don't, don't, uh, don't. You don't have to squeeze up the aisles. You can move forward more. Just begin to exalt Jesus. If you are not up here for prayer, I just want you to begin to worship the Lord right where you're at. Just let the atmosphere be saturated with worship. The Lord inhabits the throne, the praises of His people. He inhabits the praises of His people. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Prayer team, I'm going to invite you up as well. Healing team, we're just going to begin to lay hands and pray for those who are here for, uh, in the front. Even when I don't feel it, you're working Never stop, 
Amen. Who in the room uh, received healing this morning? Just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. Hallelujah. All right. All right. We're seeing some breakthrough when it comes to healing in bodies. Some of you won't know until later, but I just want to say stand in faith for what you are asking for and contend. It can happen in a moment or it can happen in a journey, but God is a, our God is a God who heals. So, Father, even right now, for those who are watching online, I just want to pray very quickly, even as we close out. So if you're watching online right now and you need healing in your body, I just want you to touch whatever it is in your body that you need healing for. And I'm just going to pray right now just that the Lord would release a healing anointing over you right now in Jesus' name. Father, even over online, Father, for everyone watching, we release healing in the name of Jesus. Even those, Father God, who are in their room, even those who are on the sickbed, Right now, God, we pray for cancer to be dissolved in bodies in Jesus' name. We pray for tumors, Father God, to be dissolved in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for creative miracles, Father God, for body parts, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, we pray even for online, we pray for, uh, Father God, any pain in the body, Father God, to be lifted in this moment. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for healing for tendonitis in the arms, in the shoulders, in the, in the hands, Father God, for arthritis, Lord God, to be healed right now in Jesus' name, Father God. Lord, we pray for any, any trauma in the mind, any trauma in the brain, Lord God, right now to be healed in the name of Jesus, Lord. You said that there would be healing in your name, that the Son of Righteousness would rise with healing in his wings. So, Father, we just declare your presence right now over those who are watching online, over all of us in the room right now. Father, let your presence rest and let there be healing, Father God, a healing bomb, that bomb of Gilead to bring healing to our bodies, even as your body was broken, Jesus, so that the brokenness in our bodies can be healed. We, uh, we apply it. We, we, we receive it right now by faith. Just receive your healing by faith. And we declare it, Lord. We don't just wait for it. We declare it, God. And by faith, we lay hold of it, God. Like the woman who said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I would be healed. Lord, we lay hold of that which you've already purchased for our bodies right now in this moment. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless you for what you've done in the room today. We thank you for what you've done in each family here and for what you will continue to do, God. We love you, Lord. We pray, keep us safe, Lord, until we gather together again. We ask this all right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.